Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. I actually knew of a case of a cultic sect who claimed to be born again. And some of the people who were in it may have been born again, but the teachings of the group were absolutely cultic. And they said the following, we should not go to the funerals of unsaved loved ones, unsaved family members, because Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Now this was pure ignorance. What Jesus meant in the historical cultural setting, that is the Sitzim Laban, and the context was this. If you read the Torah, the oldest son would have a double portion of the inheritance because he had to look after his parents until they died. It was a situation where someone not wanting to lose his inheritance was not going to follow Jesus because of financial interest to do with inheritance. That's what Jesus was actually addressing. He was not saying, don't go to the funeral of your family. Be careful of groups and churches who try to split up Christian families. Be careful of groups and churches who try to split up believers from unbelieving relatives. Spiritually, we're already separated from them. God wants to bring reconciliation with them through Christ. We have to let our families see the difference in our own lives as a witness and testimony to them. We must pray for their salvation. Bearing in mind it's very difficult to witness to unsaved loved ones who knew you before you were a Christian. Often, in fact probably most of the time, it's easier to get another Christian to witness to them than you. But God desires their salvation. God loves our families as much as we do know. God loves them more than we do. As much as we want our unsaved families to be saved, God wants them to be saved even more so. And we are his witnesses. We should not cut ourselves off in normal circumstances from unsaved family. Now, I do know other situations that were extreme alcoholic parents and things like this where the relationships were not reconcilable where children were being victimized where there was sexual abuse in the family i'm not talking about extenuating circumstances like that but the idea of separating from family just because they're unsaved is wrong the idea is to remain associated with family so they will get saved in the aspiration and prayer that they will become believers no, we are not called to separate from unsaved loved ones. We are called to try to win them for Christ. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you, Jacob. Roll. We, we need to remember also, in the last days, there will be a breakdown of families, even among the people of God and even among believers. The last thing it says in the Old Testament concerning the coming of Elijah before the return of the Lord which was partially fulfilled in the ministry of John the Baptist, but Jesus made it clear that Elijah would come again, not being John in his first, at least not John at that time. He will restore all things. Well, what does Malachi tell us that Elijah is going to restore in the last days before the Lord comes? The hearts of the parents to the children and the children of the parents. God is in the business of healing and restoring families. Now, he who loves parents more than me is not worthy of me. We should never allow love for family, biological relatives, to prevent us from becoming Christians. I know cases in my own work among Jewish people where this has happened. 
My family will be against me because we had lost family in the Holocaust and they were killed by people who were Christians or who said they were Christians. And if I accept Christ, it's going to hurt my family. Those people who murdered Jews in the name of Christ were not Christians. They were only cultural Christians. They were no more Christians than the Jews who sacrificed the Baal or the Orthodox Jew who shot Itzhak Rabin in the back was a good Jew. We never put family before God. But putting God first, we desire the salvation and restoration of our families. We need to remember also, in the last days, there will be a breakdown of families, even among the people of God and even among believers. The last thing it says in the Old Testament concerning the coming of Elijah before the return of the Lord, which was partially fulfilled in the ministry of John the Baptist, but Jesus made it clear that Elijah would come again, not being John in his first, at least not John at that time. He will restore all things. Well, what does Malachi tell us that Elijah is going to restore in the last days before the Lord comes? The hearts of the parents to the children and the children of the parents. God is in the business of healing and restoring families. Now, he who loves parents more than me is not worthy of me. We should never allow love for family, biological relatives, to prevent us from becoming Christians. I know cases in my own work among Jewish people where this has happened. My family will be against me because we had lost family in the Holocaust and they were killed by people who were Christians or who said they were Christians. And if I accept Christ, it's going to hurt my family. Those people who murdered Jews in the name of Christ were not Christians. They were only cultural Christians. They were no more Christians than the Jews who sacrificed the Baal or the Orthodox Jew who shot Itzhak Rabin in the back was a good Jew. We never put family before God. But putting God first, we desire the salvation and restoration of our families.